the environmentalist groups, the people that are trying to steal the water from everybody. Turning this water off is not just bad politics, it's an act of domestic terror. No water for the farmers because of this fish. Is that what it is, this fish here? That is putting fish in front of man under the Endangered Species Act and, and potentially threatening our food supply. We've got to stop, uh, you know, choosing the smell and the salmon over the people and over farming. It's not even a species, it's a subspecies. Do you follow me? Am I getting too many? The environmentalist movement is nothing but a front for Marxism, a communist movement. No matter where in America you live, you are touched by what happens in California. Even if you don't live in the Golden State, chances are pretty good that you've heard stories about something that is really whacked about farming and water. California agriculture provides the nation with fruits and vegetables year-round. The lettuce in your salad the oranges on your table, the tomatoes for the spaghetti sauce you love. Most of it is grown here, grown in places where there is very little rainfall. This is the Pacific Ocean. Somewhere out there are salmon, swimming around, eating, and trying their best not to be eaten or caught. As for being caught, at least for the last few years, that's not been a problem. This will get you, give you an idea of what's happening to them. But I, I can't even be around watch it. It just bothers me. I know most of these boats, like you know, another person, and it's very difficult because they have made families livings for a long time. Just makes me sick to come back here. And there's the a lot of them in the brush up back there. And there's masts and booms and shafts and propellers everywhere. So nobody's outfitting a salmon boat much anymore. During a usual salmon season, this dock would be packed with boats. The ice machine would be running. There would be boats unloading. Boats putting groceries on, getting ready to go. There'd be so much activity down here, you can't believe it. Look at it now, totally empty. Out along the harbor reach, boats stand dried up on the beach. Ghost like in the early dawn, empty now the fish are gone. This here, that's salmon water. California farmers are in trouble. California's agricultural interests love talking about the importance of the crops they grow to feed America and the world. These bountiful and incredibly profitable harvests are made possible by massive engineering projects that redistribute water from mountain streams and rivers. Here's the Central Valley Project today. Over 20 dams and reservoirs to store 14 million acre feet of water. 4.6 trillion gallons for farm, home, and industry. It was authorized as part of the 1935 stimulus bill allocating $500 million for, quote, trans mountain water diversion and irrigation. Or to put that in layman's terms, the government should stop meddling in the business of the farmers who would actually still be living in a desert if not for government meddling. We have to put in a lot of machinery uh, to uh, put this water uh, where we want it at the right time. And that's why we have powerful pumps and great gates and huge valves and of course we have to bring it from the reservoir to where we want it sometimes as much as a hundred miles to a great city at a distance and then deliver it to the individual houses so that when you want the water all you do is reach out and turn on a tap like this 
It all works pretty well when nature blesses us with wet years and good snowfall in the mountains. But in dry years, our complex system becomes severely stressed. There are several government agencies involved with water, wildlife, and people. Both federal and state agencies play out their roles, sometimes for good, other times with disastrous results. You're looking at dead salmon on the Klamath River in 2002. It was a year of drought, and desperate, angry growers demanded that more Klamath water be diverted for their irrigation needs. The Bush administration relented, relaxing protections in place to keep the salmon run healthy. The river's water was sent to thirsty crops. More than 30,000 salmon died as a result. On their way back from the ocean, on their trip to return to their natal streams to mate, they encountered a river with not enough water and water that was too warm for them to survive. California's weather cycles are never predictable. So when the state gets less rainfall than normal, tensions ramp up. A couple of years ago, we started seeing these signs along the highway that runs through the west side of the Central Valley. Then we started seeing stories on TV and in print about how farmers were suffering because the government turned off the tap. Now, if you would have told me that those, that water would have stopped, I would have believed maybe Al-Qaeda struck, not the federal government. I went, uh... Water pumping was reduced because a two-inch fish lives its life in a complex and environmentally sensitive water transition zone, the Sacramento-San Joaquin estuary, called the Delta. The Delta smelt had begun to disappear. We're standing at the edge of the Yolo Causeway with Dr. Peter Moyle, professor of fish biology at the University of California, Davis. I analyzed all the existing data and said, it looks like to me like the smelt populations have crashed. Something's going on. The American Fishery Society took my position, submitted it to the Fish and Wildlife Service, and the smelt got listed. Listing the Delta smelt as an endangered species set off a legal chain of events mandated by the Endangered Species Act. The law, signed by President Richard Nixon, requires that steps must be taken to prevent the listed species from becoming extinct. About the same time, commercial salmon fishermen and recreational anglers noticed they were not catching many wild salmon. You see, baby salmon also depend on the delta. It's a waypoint on their swim that takes them through the San Francisco Bay Estuary to go under the Golden Gate Bridge and live their adult life in the ocean. Then, when it's time for them to mate, adult salmon swim back under the bridge, finding their way back through the delta and eventually to the mountain streams of their beginnings, where they mate and then die. Living in a scientific age, we need citizens who know enough about science to make intelligent decisions about what they do. Are we going to use it constructively? Government and non-government scientists determined that one of the most significant reasons for the collapse of both the smelt and the salmon was the amount of fresh water pumped through the delta. Water sent south for irrigation and water for the huge urban population of Southern California. The solution to stopping the salmon from disappearing forever was clearly identified. The answer was to have a modest reduction in the amount of water taken from the delta. The National Academy of Sciences says federal actions keeping water from Westside farmers were scientifically justified. In fact, one of the most important habitat characteristics for these species that we tend to focus our attention on is water. I mean, salmon live in the water, and they are responding to the conditions in the river channels and in the estuary um, that are associated with the timing amounts and qualities and quantities of the water flowing through those systems. Salmon don't live in trees. The big industrial agriculture interests on the west side of the valley went ballistic. They brought in a powerful PR company to construct a story about a little fish that was destroying California's agriculture. They bought and paid for an army of farm workers to march on the state capitol, carrying professionally made signs that summarized their rage, 
arguing that this was about fish versus people. Farmers in California, they're losing their land, their crops, and their livelihood all because of a two-inch fish. The PR firm did its job well, as you would expect from the biggest PR firm in the world. Who's Burson Marsteller? Well, let me put it this way. When Blackwater killed those 17 Iraqi civilians in Baghdad, they called Burson Marsteller. When there was a nuclear meltdown at Three Mile Island, Babcock and Wilcox, who built that plant, called Burson Marsteller. The Bhopal chemical disaster that killed thousands of people in India, Union Carbide called Burson Marsteller. Romanian dictator Nicolae Ceausescu, Burson Marsteller. The government of Saudi Arabia, three days after 9-11, Burson Marsteller. Philip Morris, <laughs> Burson Marsteller. Silicone breast implants, Burson Marsteller. When evil needs public relations, evil has Burson Marsteller on speed dial. Welcome to the special edition of Hannity. We are live in the Central Valley in California. Ladies and gentlemen, this has become a dust bowl. Americans have been bombarded by stories about farms going under, farm worker unemployment, the threat of higher food costs, all because of that two-inch fish, a story that most major media swallowed without asking very many questions. Many sunsets have come and gone since the PR firm did their job. These stories are still being told. The livelihoods of thousands of hardworking family farmers are destroyed. And they're destroyed all because some faceless, dim government bureaucrat took away their lifeline, their water. And they claimed that it was in order to protect a two-inch fish. Now, where I come from, we'd call that bait. <laughs> it's summertime in the city, but something's not right. It's summertime in California's farm-rich Central Valley but something's not right. These boats should be on the ocean, not tied up. Something's not right. Since the summer of 2009, Salmon Water Now and other organizations have been pushing back, telling the stories that big agriculture doesn't want the public to think about. For the most part, Major media coverage has ignored the economic tragedy that has impacted thousands of people along hundreds of miles of California and Oregon coastline. And the story about the environmental disaster that the policies have had on the once bountiful runs of wild salmon. My feeling is there doesn't seem to be much hope for the future for either side. We need to make sure the fish have habitat. That means temperature, that means flow, that means clean, clear water. But the growers who have dominated the discussion don't want Americans to know anything about that. They prefer to ridicule any sound science that suggests that reducing the amount of water they want would help reverse the problem. We've spent about 20 to 30 million dollars a year studying the delta and monitoring the fish, trying to understand them. Uh, we don't understand them, but we do have regulators who like to shut the pumping plants down. The truth is that there is enough water to go around for people living in cities, for farmers to grow crops, and for wildlife who are the most senior of all the water rights holders in the state. There is enough water if we share. Children, you must share your things. You mustn't be selfish. People should always share things. Oh, all right here. But sharing is a concept that the richest and most powerful agribusinesses in the state are not willing to consider. When science tells them they need to reduce the amount of water they take for irrigation, it seems like they hold their breath like little children, stomp their feet, and say, hell no, not us. Then they go to court. We intend to file another lawsuit. Water is a public trust resource. It belongs to all of us. But the sky is falling message that Americans hear from Big Ag's political friends twists reality into their own image. 
They are deliberately misleading the media and all Americans to cover up their true agenda. That agenda is to secure water rights that they know are not guaranteed, even if it means pushing salmon to the edge of extinction. You are looking at the actual signed contract between the Westlands Water District and the Bureau of Reclamation. As you can see, their contract clearly states that water deliveries are not guaranteed. See this over here? They just put these in third year of the drought. They just planted them. Permanent crops that must have water year-round. They plant crops on poison toxic soil that must have a massive amount of water in order to make anything grow. Sometimes, what we thought was in our past is actually still very much with us, impacting the choices and decisions that we face today. These are pictures of horribly deformed birds. They were found by U.S. Fish and Wildlife biologist Harry Ohlendorf at the Kesterson National Wildlife Refuge in the western side of the Central Valley in 1983. That story from the 80s is the same story as today. Nothing has changed, but they demand water and seemingly will stop at nothing to get it. It's not unreasonable to want to ensure there is enough water for crops. But a new wrinkle in California's wacky water world is much darker. Just to be clear, the ability to buy government-provided water at low cost and sell it to needy buyers was part of a congressional law passed in 1992. The Central Valley Project Improvement Act was written to encourage water conservation. Unfortunately, in actuality, the law has been twisted and manipulated by greedy individuals at corporate agriculture into a fluid cash cow. In 1994, a dairy farmer in Los Banos tried to carry out a nearly $6 million deal with Southern California's Metropolitan Water District. It was a deal that didn't happen, not because it was illegal, but because of the heat generated by media coverage. But times have definitely changed. In 2009, a $77 million sale was completed. We know. This whole water thing in California is complicated. It's frustrating and crazy. Trying to understand it can give you a headache. These are important issues and we make no apology for having a point of view. This video is just one of many that we've made about the drama that is California water politics. You can see all of them at our website. It's time to let the light of truth about California's water crisis enter America's homes. It's time to burst the bubble of misinformation. When you hear stories about a two-inch fish destroying California agriculture, when you hear politicians suggest that the Endangered Species Act should be ignored or modified to weaken it, When you see sound, peer-reviewed science dismissed or challenged in court. When you hear someone dismiss the value and importance of salmon. Remember what you've seen here. People have pushed salmon to the brink. And people can stop salmon swim to oblivion. It's time to make what is wrong right again. It's time for salmon water now. <laughs>